Ian, we're in a time of multi multi game consoles coming out every every other month. May not be uh, named with a dead company from the past, right? But there's also a lot of new multi carts that are coming out. And they have come out in the past. We covered them before mm -hmm. uh, with Jalico ones in the past, uh, Game Boy. We uh, covered Wisdom Tree ones in the past, multi carts. But, <laughs> but yeah, but we have. Um, uh, new ones on the way as right. well from we Retrobit. So these interest me because they're um, they're done by Jalico. Oh, well, they're Jalico Classics repackaged. Um, Data East, Jalico Games, uh, both companies that have uh, made stuff I really enjoy. And Retrobit makes uh, you know um, Retrobit makes the modern clone consoles and stuff like this, and now they're getting into cartridges. So they're doing. Um, a data e we'll get into the games in a minute. They're doing a Data East All-Star Collection for NES, a Data East Classic Collection for Super Nintendo, Data East Joe and Mac Collection for Super Nintendo, a Jalico Brawler Pack for Super Nintendo. All right, where do you want to start here? So we'll start real quick with the Data East All-Star Collection. Oh, by the way, the, the NES card's going to be 30 bucks. Super Nintendo one's going to be 35 So I'll say right away that I, I, I think the, the idea of doing publisher-based multi carts is is pretty interesting i do think that's kind of cool um especially when you're going for these lesser known uh developers um they appear to come with uh pins some cool stickers uh some of them look like stickers i've actually seen in the past so they might be repros of like original stickers that's neat so the data east all-star collection on the nes has uh ring king bad dudes side pocket Burger Time and Buggy Popper. Buggy Popper is Bump and Jump. These are the NES versions. Yeah. Okay. And for thirty bucks, um, gotta be honest, Burger Time and Bump and Jump are the two games that really stand out on that collection for me as being, you know, decent. Not Side Pocket. And so I was gonna say here. Hold on. And Side Pocket's pretty fun too. Um, Ring King, Bad Dudes, I could probably do without. Okay. I don't know why you're pulling that one out. Anyways, the Data East collection on the SNES has Fighter's History. Oh, well, hold on a second. Okay. What, what else comes with this package here? You get some feelies in, in, in there. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I mentioned that. I mentioned well, well, the, the... But specifically, you, you, what, what do you get there? You get some cute stuff. I, you get a button set? Yeah, a hug button it, set. Hug it out, Ring King guys. And a button of... The, what's the chef's name from, from Burger Time? I don't know his Peter name. Peter Pepper. Okay, you got those little stickers. You can stack a burger yeah, there. Yeah, you get the original adorable. sticker collection, and you get an, an actual full color instruction manual. Yeah, so it, it, there's some there's some value there for thirty bucks, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I think there is value there. I, I I think there is. I think, like I said when I was talking about the stickers and stuff, I think it's a neat collection. To me, you'd be selling me on weird stuff like the stickers. Um, the games contained on the cart, I would say like three out of five of those, you know, are 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 good games. Um, they're also not entirely expensive games to just own outright, though. Sure. But I think that's not the point with having a multi no. new release. Yeah. No, it's, right. it's, it's not. All right, what do you think about the Data East Classic Collection for Super Nintendo here? That's Fighter's History. Fighter's History, Mizoguchi, Magical Drop, Magical Drop 2, and Super Side Pocket. For me, that's a little too much double dipping, I think. Um, Magical Drop is great. It's fun, but you don't need the first Magical Drop if you've got Magical Drop 2. Um... Fighter's History is, I mean, the famous Street Fighter 2 ripoff, and it's not very good, and you certainly don't need the first one if you've got Mizoguchi. Um, Super Side Pocket? It's still Side Pocket. As I say, I don't know what the, I don't think I've ever played Super Side Pocket. I'm sure it's just more uh, graphically it, it's closer a, it's, to the arcade. It's a graphically cleaner Side Pocket. Sure. But... Um, this one... I, and you still get a couple of pi a couple of uh, pins. Yeah, I mean, stickers. you get a uh, you know you, you get, get a, a funny buttons. fighters history set uh, button, you know, a uh, uh, magical drop button, and then um, that probably doesn't appeal to me as much. No, uh, this one not so much versus the NES one. Now this one is these next two though I think are particularly cool. Um, the Data East Joe and Mac Ultimate Caveman Collection for Super Nintendo um, brings the three um joe and mac games together um joe mac congo's caper and joe and mac 2 lost in the tropics um 
The Super Nintendo versions are arguably the best versions of any of those ga- of 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 Joe and Mac. Okay. Um, the second in the it's not the, like the NES version, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, the other two games are not cheap to get anymore. I mean, they're they're fairly expensive. What, what does the first one go for? First one is nah, relatively inexpensive. I want to still say, is. I want to say like fifteen twenty or something. Oh like wow, that. that's more than I thought it'd be. And the second one though is always a lot harder to find. Yeah, second one's expensive, and Congo's Caper is expensive as well. Congo's Caper was that the second or third in the? Second? I think that's technically the second, and Joan Mac Two is technically the third. Okay, but so I have no experience with with Congo's Caper. Th- they're fun. I can't remember the proper order. Fact of the matter is, they're two games that are not particularly cheap, and they're pretty decent games. Mm-hmm. So what's cool about this one is it's to me this you know it, it it's like the Ninja Gaiden trilogy or something like that where where you're getting all the games on one cart that's a nice package thematically it works you get I really like the Tyrannosaurus uh, bumper sticker um, I think the <laughs> is it a bumper sticker or it's a sticker well, it's it, a sticker it's not a bumper sticker. well it, it, it's, it's, a it's a long sticker yeah. yeah. Um, I really like the pin that's Joe and Mac and Joe and Mac and Joe really? and Mac. Really? You like that? I, I think that's clever. Um, and then you get a little booklet. Yeah, and then you get the booklet. And uh, I do think the the Super Nintendo, like, specially designed cartridge is neat looking. And So, yeah, I mean, not and this is not a commercial, but I do think this is, this is a cool one. And then this one, I think, is pretty awesome as well. Not that these games were great. <laughs> But there is the, and, and, and some people know about, but the, the loosely tied, little known, I guess, Jalico Brawler series that was Rival Turf, Brawl, Brawl Brothers, The Peacekeepers, and then I, I guess Tough Enough. Um, I thought it was only three out of the yeah, I thought the series. I, I thought there was only three. Yeah, three of these are part of the series. Um, let's see, I'm looking it up. I don't uh, think Tough the Enough. Rushing, the Rushing Beat uh, Rans series. A Rushing Beat series. So you had... Uh, Rival Turf, and then you had Brawl Brothers was, and the Peacekeeper. Yeah, Tough Enough is is not. Okay. Um, so you get that entire trilogy, um, which is not also... I believe one of those is going for a, a fairly decent amount. Tough Enough, I thought it was always a cheap one to, to get. Uh, Rival Turf or, and Tough Enough are, are cheap. The other two are a little more expensive. Um, the other two are a little more expensive, and Tough Enough is just kind of thrown in there to be thrown in. But once again, I think that's cool because it's thematic. It makes sense. Sure. You don't have to chase down a couple of more expensive cartridges, and it's there. So all in all, I think I like the idea of taking their games, uh, the idea of taking a game series and getting it all on one cartridge officially more than just slapping some games onto it. Was tough enough? Was that a fighting game more than a brawler? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I believe it is. Okay, so that's why that's outside of the other other two yes. okay so they just threw it in just to throw it in yeah okay that, that makes sense so oh there is a sto- there is a story mode to toughen up yes now i remember playing that there is a, a weird story, story mode, mode but it's still technically a, to me a fighting game okay so long and short of it i think these multi cards are an interesting idea like to see how well they would play i guess um well, the, and with the mean, quality of them. They're, they're just the ROMs with the menu. Yeah, probably. I mean, so, they I mean, should be fine. They be exactly the same in theory. Um, but I definitely prefer the idea of, of the thematic ones as opposed uh, to the ones that oh, sure. don't seem as... I, I love I love the idea of the NES ones because I, I love the little Burger Time and uh, little stickers. I think they're it's adorable. And if I had to get a second one... I don't know. I think the I think the Brawlers pack appeals to me a little bit more than the other two. If I had to go to get a second one, I would probably honestly do both the Super Nintendo ones. I mean, there, there's well, three Super Nintendo ones. So you do the oh, I do Brawlers and uh, I do Brawlers and uh, Joe and Mac. Sure. Uh, I, I think soon though you'd find that you'd run out of quality multi carts you could probably do and have for a reasonable price like this because there's yes. a reason why these they can do a thirty dollar cartridge because these not like. Not like a lot of people are clamoring after you're playing side pocket on the NES, except for my friend. Yeah, <laughs> right. He'll be excited about the news, though. though. Yeah, he will. I, I mentioned that story in a certain NES guidebook about that. It was kind of a sociopath, my friend. He always, every time, spoiler, every time I talk about the NES for probably six years in a row, yeah, hey, remember that game? Uh, what was that Billiards game? Yeah, side, side pocket. pocket. Yeah, yeah that's that the one. one. <laughs> every time. <laughs> not, not a joke, either. It's crazy. Uh, Hope you don't hear this, uh, AJ. Anyway, 
Uh, so, okay, that's fun. And I think there'll be, there might be other ventures that follow suit. But again, it'd be hard to find quality multi-carts that you can probably have a thematic sort of. Yeah, uh, mi- mixed oppor- missed opportunity for uh, some good Jalico Super Nintendo, or regular Nintendo ones, though. So. Oh, I'm sure other yeah. companies might follow suit, actually. But uh, I'm just saying, like, if they're doing Jalico and Dead East, why not do a Jalico one with, like, uh, a city connection, a bases loaded, a uh, wampum? Uh, well, mean, the bases loaded carts are worth a dollar each. So, I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> no one will, no one's going back to play Gold bases two. loaded, too. Uh, yeah, like I said, you're running out of steam already when it comes to Jalico. Like, it's, it's a little tough, but uh, at least on the NES. All right. 